The awards are as important as those films that are great films make them. The rest is nonsense. And I, I think that the, you know, in the American awards areas, the major awards, which are you know, telev television programs um, first, um, that uh, the producers of them, the Academy, have exercised really extraordinary cowardice. Um, when it comes to being part of, of uh, the bigger world of expression, um, and in fact have largely been part of uh, limiting the imagination and, uh, and, and being very limiting of uh, different cultural expressions. So I, I don't, I, I get very excited about what we'll call the Academy Awards when a film like, um, um, Florida Project graces it, or I'm still here graces it, or um, y you know Odiard's new film, uh, uh, Amelia Perez, or the things that that are likely to happen this year. Um, my excitement about all of that will be as it would have been at another time, but um, when those things step off the stage. Hello, uh, Mr. Rapin. Uh, so I'm happy to, to have you here in Marrakech today. My question is, do you have your own set of rules about what roles you would take? S say that again. So d do you have your own set of rules about what roles you will take in your uh -huh. films? Yeah, and I will answer that, but I realize I didn't fully answer this other question because I was thinking about an example of another wonderful movie this year, The Apprentice. Um, and, and also as it carries over into the greater conversation of distribution. Um, I don't know what to say about the distribution issues these days because I, don't, I can't claim to understand how the younger audiences take in all the information in ways that I'm just not wired a, a, a generationally to do. In a way, my bias is that I, the girl I fell in love with was the big screen alone, you know, with strangers in a room, and, and I'm still stuck there. Uh, so while there's an enormous amount of content available, one of the great things about streaming is that I'm no longer stuck just seeing foreign film in the one or two art theaters that would play it, uh, picking two or three movies a year. I could, you know, it, it has made the sharing of film, uh, you know, internationally a good thing. That's a, there's always good parts to these tools, but, um, the, the way that it's limited and that the, the business has put the, only the razzle-dazzle and the like, Cirque du Soleil of genre films on the big screens and it's very hard to get thoughtful films there. What I find as an impact is that people like me don't go to the movies anymore. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the good writings on television most of the time or the great little gems of films, but when something sneaks through, it's, it's uh, um, you know, to be celebrated. I just uh, often miss those two because I've just gotten in the habit of not trusting it. <laughs> um, and then going back to, uh, you know, but The Apprentice. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of jaw-dropping how afraid um, this business of Mavericks is uh, when they get a great film like that, with great, great acting, um, that they too can be as afraid as a piddly little Republican congressman. <laughs> um, what do I choose or not choose to do? I gotta, I gotta love something in the first 10 pages or I get lazy and don't read the rest. I usually know in the first 10 pages, but it's about the director first. And, and it's about, yeah. And, and, and I think more and more, uh, <laughs> right, there's, you've seen military have these patches all the time with different slogans. Um, my favorite one is suck less. And I like to work with people who suck less. <laughs> <laughs>